Okay, beautiful. So welcome to our uh, token practice together. I wanted to invite uh, more people in to learn, to understand what are we actually doing here. And uh, there might be some noise behind me. That's our uh, construction site, working on building more places for people to stay with us, long-term, short-term, experience life in this place on earth, little corner on the earth, where we're actually practicing together as a community, life skills. And that's what I wanted to share today a little bit about, you know, the skills of life that are spiky. Cat, kish kush, come say hello. Hello. Mm. Well, the different skills that we can acquire in our life in order to find self mastery. So, for that, let's uh, first take a moment to breathe and to meditate because the tendency in this modern time is to rush, 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 give me now, summarize it for me. I want to chew, swallow, digest, and perform. There is time, endless time. It may end up one day like that, but until then, we have time. So in this time, we'd like to start with breathing, meditating, find a comfortable place to sit. You may close your eyes, relax. Relax your shoulders, relax your face, relax your facial muscles. You can either uplift your spine or even lean back just to be comfortable. And focus on the amount of air entering your body <clears throat> as you breathe in. <clears throat> breathe in and out. And allow the breath to enter deeper into deeper places in your body, from the chest down to the central abdomen.
And from the central abdomen to the lower abdomen, as you breathe in and out, try to guide the breath down deeper. And relax also your hips and your legs, however you're seated. So by breathing and guiding the breath towards the hips and the legs, we can imagine a soft sensation crawling in. Or even heaviness that causing the limbs to sink down. And the breath now, invite the body to stretch up. Allow the spine to rise up. Make it longer, elongate it. Pulling it up straight towards the skies. From where the spine enters the head and connect the base of the scalp. Allow a vertical line to rise up to the skies. And imagine an energy wave or spiral flow from the base of your scalp, from the coccyx, your tail area, your perineum, rising up along the spine. You may feel it spiraling up in a certain direction, from right to left or from left to right, and rise up and uplift the body. Straight in the spine, the head, yet relax the shoulders. And again, focusing on the breath through the nose, Observing how open or closed your breathing is. If it's really open, enjoy. Enjoy fresh breath. If it's closed or a bit blocked, just observe which side is more blocked. Without thinking why and what happened, doesn't matter. Just observe and if you feel that you need a deeper longer breath you can take it to the mouth and if you can soften up your breath and enjoy nasal breathing it is better And as we calm the body down and calm the mind down by focusing on breath, we can slowly, slowly bring a little smile to our face. And this energy of a smile is a rising energy that comes from the center core of the body, from the heart, or from the soul, solar plexus. 
And the smile allow the eyes to open up slowly, slowly. And we are here wanting to share about the beauty and the art of self-mastery and the reason for it. So I feel that we are living as humans on this earth at this time specifically with a great mission to wake up and rise and support the global change that needs to happen and that is happening. And it depends really in what uh, circles and people around and conversations or activism you are that allow you to be exposed more and more to what is happening on both ends. One end of the race of taking more and more resources from this planet. And the other side that is, I'm not sure if it's racing, but it's being much, much more active towards understanding how we can live in harmony on this planet, in this life. Because we already learned that if we don't find harmony and if we don't live in balance, the natural tendency of things is to collapse, to break. And the best place to look at it is our own body. And if there's no balance in our body, the body starts to signal and it signals us through different methods. I call it flags. If we look at green flag as go ahead, everything is good. Yellow flag, pay attention. Red flag, stop. Exactly the same in our body. The body has a tolerant aspect ratio where sometimes we just see, feel a little, a little yellow flag here and there, a little pain in the knee, a little uh, whistling in the ears, a little lower back pain, but ah, it's okay, it will pass. And we don't really put enough attention to what it is, why it is, why does it increase, why suddenly it's hard to wake up in the morning or so, and the different signs. And we just hope that it will go away, that it's just a wave. But everything has a reason. And in the process of self-mastery, we want to inquire what is the reason for things. Why? Why things are happening. So obviously we cannot stop change. Change always happens in this reality. Also the change of the race towards more and the race towards, hey, let's stop, let's find balance. Let's return to the natural ways. And so those conversations are very alive in our circles. And I want to bring it also out to you guys. If you watch live or if you're on Facebook or if you will watch it later, I'll definitely share this um, this conversation because in a way how we want to master our life on the outside is also how we master our own self and that's what I'm talking about self-mastery and if we go back 100 steps to the beginning of creation where this playground was created and then humans brought into the world in whatever way you believe in you know, through a seed, through an egg, through the stardust. It doesn't matter. We are here. Somehow we came. We evolved. We are keep on evolving. And yet we need to understand the role and the, our role and the rules of this game, this playground. And so, in a way, what we see outside is also what is going on inside us. And if we see chaos outside us, it means that there is some kind of chaos inside. There is confusion. There is uh, negative emotions. Uh, there is uh, different influences. 
there's imbalance in the body. If we see outside us, positive environment, uh, good friends, love energy, expansion, abundance, it is how we practice our own self. And so when we come to say, yeah, I want to learn how to master my life or to learn more how to be in control in those moments that I want to be in control, we don't have to be in control all the time. We can sometimes let go and say, universe, that's what I always say, universe, surprise me. And those moments are very, very beautiful and precious. <clears throat> and what I wanted to say before about life mastery and about um, the, the, the whole principles and ideas and discipline behind it is that when the universe was created and we were brought into the universe, the main thing that was uh, maybe requested or offered, offered us was, hey, enjoy. Enjoy this creation. It's amazing. Like if I'm talking from God's perspective of, or the creator or whoever created that, that super intelligent uh, uh, energy that basically expanded from being a unified field into everything. That's how the Tao talks about. From nothing became the thing, the one. From the one, the two, from the two, the three, and everything evolved. That's in very short one sentence, the theory of yin and yang and beyond the yin and the yang, beyond duality. So if we're here to enjoy, why not to enjoy? Why need, we need to be stressed? Why we need to run after things? Why we need to worry? Why we have all these emotions? Why we need to find tools like qigong and tai chi and meditations? Why not just to enjoy? Because we came with a certain nature and a certain evolution and change with a peak. There is a peak. For us humans, we have a certain amount of time, let's call it, that we are journeying from the beginning of this life to the end of this life to the unknown and maybe back to another life. We don't know. During this life, like a tree that starts from a little or from a seed into a little shoot that grow, 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 grow into the maximum potential. And then it starts to decay. It can be 10 years, 50 years, 500 years. And we see that living in nature. I see that all the time. I see lemon trees, citrus, lemon trees, that I thought that they live forever. They don't live forever. They start from a tiny, tiny seed of a lemon, and they grow. And they grow into a big tree of size of maybe two, three meters, and they provide fruits. And after 10 years, suddenly, they die. They serve their purpose, and they start to decline. And they start to become dry, and no more green leaves, no more fruits. And then they just fall and return to the earth. This kind of cycle is natural. In this kind of cycle, also humans are. We are part of this cycle. And we come with certain tendencies. And one of our tendencies is to be lazy. Not to really want to do things. Let, let me just sit on the hammock or lie in bed and everything will pass and I don't want to know even about stuff. It's a tendency. I've been there also, not too many times, but I know the feeling. and. Yeah, sometimes we run away from, we escape from challenges or from, from a change that we don't even know how to deal with and we run to bed and we just like hide and hope that it will pass away. And wake up the next day and everything's sorted. Well, if you call magic, it can happen. And yet we need to deal with things in order to evolve. And that's why in the journey of self-mastery, we collect tools and especially you guys and myself collect tools in order to ease up the moments of challenge, to find ways to go through intense moments, um, um, yeah, um, tests, exams, um, you know, moments of stress, to go through them with more ease, with more comfort, with more power, with more self-confidence. 
And those challenges do not have to be just outside challenges. Of course, outside challenges, you know, work-related, relationship-related, family-related, and so on, but also inner you know, challenges. I'm afraid to go outside because I'm ashamed of myself. I'm shy. I don't know how to express myself. I don't know how to speak. I don't know what to say in a social gathering. I don't feel that I'm worthy being seen. You know, all these things. I feel that I'm not pretty. I'm not handsome. Nobody likes me. My voice looks terrible. My nose looks terrible. All that thing. So there's a lot of self challenges that we are carrying. Some of them on the conscious level and some of them from childhood traumas. And, and we already know that some of them even come from past lives. And, and in order to deal with those different elements, different inner challenges, conflicts, and external, better we have tools. And I usually um, relate that to being a, a car mechanic. You know, when we have a car, and first of all, we want to have a nice, good car that also looks nice on the outside. When you go inside, it looks really beautiful, amazing. It smells good. It's clean. You, you put the, the key in and you ignite and immediately there's ignition sound and you can drive. Nothing breaks. No red lights, no, no yellow lights. Either no lights or just green. Same with our body. And same with life. So the car, the vehicle that we are driving is our body. And it's much more complicated and smart than a car. But to know how to fix a car, you need to have tools. You need to have the right tools. And otherwise, what happens? The car breaks or starts smoke or doesn't have uh, power to drive or the brakes don't work or so many things. And we don't, now have, we don't have now the right tools. Then we have to stop the car and spend time on go and find either someone that knows how to fix the car or find the tools to fix the car. But if we have the right tools, we can go ahead and we have the knowledge. So we need to have the tools and the knowledge how to use the tools and we can fix that and sort things. And in the journey of our life, we are offered, we are being offered different tools from childhood, from whom? from our family, from our parents, from our greater family. We learn things from our friends, from teachers, from education systems, until we reach a stage where we can start choose <clears throat> what we want to learn. And then we see that many of those tools that we were forced to learn are actually useless, like learning history, like learning, you know, different, different things that are not really being in being in used you know, i can say many many different um examples but sometimes like physics maybe someone who's a physician or that was his ignition it helped him but for me i don't even remember what i learned in physics and i spent four years learning that and what did i do i just like memorized the things so i can pass the exams that's it i find that very stupid it didn't help me at all so it really depends what uh, are the the educational systems are and nowadays there are much more possibilities and yet we pass those times and we reach a place where we start to choose <clears throat> what do we want to acquire what is really important to us in our life in order to start saying yes i am the master of my own body and mind or I know how to control my body and mind. Oh, I understand my body and mind a little bit more than what before. Before, I didn't even know how this body operates. For me, in my personal journey, that was one of my main requests or needs. I wanted to know how my body operates. And then I wanted to know what tools I need in order to fix the body when the body doesn't operate as I want. And then I saw that how oh, it's actually controlling my body and it's being like constantly processing sensations ideas so is the mind the brain is like very logical and the mind accumulate and collect everything sensations emotions feelings and thoughts 
and process all that together all the time. <clears throat> and then I learned that some of those processes or inputs that are coming in are important and are being carried, memorized or remembered. And I call it imprinted. So it's like event, imprint in my cells, where if it's very important or strong or meaningful, it usually comes in the dream time. Not necessarily exactly in a logical way of what ex you experienced before, but in some kind of uh, an analogy. If it's not so important, I saw that it's sometimes like it comes and goes. It evaporates. I saw a beautiful cloud that looks like a rabbit. Ah, that's amazing. A week later, I forget that I saw that. That's what I exactly remember that I saw a week ago when we went to a um, funeral memorial of a dear friend's son. And I saw an amazing elephant that looks like Ganesha in the skies. And I completely related that to, this, to the boy that left his body as a message to his parents, message of love. And that's something that were, was really stuck in my mind. And I remember it. And that was a special memory. Not that it affected me in a certain way, but I acknowledge that. Another thing that may happen, once we start seeing ourselves and see how our mind operates, we can see how a certain thought create a reaction through nature that affects our life. For example, we have a negative thought. A second later, five seconds later, we hit the road or we hit a stone or a rock or the sidewalk with our leg. We fall and we sprain our ankle. Most people will say, ah, oh, what an accident. Oh my God, I'm so stupid. I start with self-judgment, self judgment self uh, and blame the whole world around. How stupid, who made the sidewalk here? Why didn't they take the rock away? But never thinking that maybe because of my negative thought, a few seconds ago, that's what happened to me. And when we start to understand that, we start to understand that we are really creating a reality that is constantly giving us feedbacks. And all the beautiful talks about manifestation, power of manifestation, power of creating our own reality, they are very true. When we, when we learn and we understand how to use this power of manifestation. And for me, it starts with self-mastery. Because the more we are in control from a place of choice in our, on our body and mind, we can play this game in a better way in a more beautiful way, in a more fun way. And it brings us back to, ah, oh, yeah, let's enjoy life. Why? Because we can. We can choose when we want to sit on the hammock and have fun and look at nature, breathe, meditate, dance, work hard, party hard, sleep long, you know, meet friends, say no to this, say yes to that, and be in a state of awareness and consciousness towards what's happening in my body all the time. Not from a place of worry, from a place of awareness. Ah, worry and awareness. It's kind of similar, but brings us a different way to look at things. And so, what is self-mastery? How, how can we bring self-mastery with joy and fun and the different tools that self-mastery requires from us? And that was part of my life mission to understand that and once i understood that it took me a few more years to compile it into a book that i called be the way very influenced by the tao by the tao te ching influenced by the five elements from chinese medicine and then influenced from the six elements qigong that we are now practicing and i teach and it has six chapters of of a complete way or a method of self-mastery that things that we need to look at and modify in case it's needed in our life in order to be more in awareness and in control to a place where we want to walk the line of balance of bliss of being the blissful state of being 
is walking on the path of balance. And the first thing in our self-mastery, I feel that is something that we are dealing with all the time, that is food. The whole world of nutrition, of food, that is closely related to the consumption of humanity, of food nowadays, where there's so much variety of everything, of the good stuff, but also the increase of the, the bad food. And the food that in the past was feeding our um, ancestors, grandfathers' mothers and grand-grandfathers' mothers, which was rice, corn, and then, you know, sugars and flowers, nowadays is very poorly nutrient. It's very, it has a very low quality. The white, the whites, the four whites, remember this, like the white sugar, white flour, white rice. What's the fourth? White corn. Those elements that before were part of our daily regime of eating, nowadays creating celiac diseases, creating abdominal problems, creating diarrhea or constipation, creating uh, intestinal problems, abdominal problems, refluxes, diabetes. All these, why? Just because of the quality of that went down because there's too much consumption from companies and brands that want to create 10 different types of breads. So in our ways of returning to what is good is to return to what is more natural. And what is more natural is the original grain. If it's brown sugar, if it's uh, brown sugar, yeah, if it's wild rice, black or brown or integral, as they call it here in, in Spanish, with sugars, if we take sugars, we go into the sugar cane. It's called tapa dulce here. The pure raw sugar canes, we grow cane here. Now we can actually suck on the sugar juice from the, from the cane. And of course, all the different variety of food. And for that, we need to have general understandings of what is good for me. How much do I eat versus how much do I need to eat? Or what does my body want? So in the practice of my own self-mastery, I was at one point saying, I am not eating until my body tells me that he's hungry. If my body is not hungry, I'm not going to eat because it's 8 a.m. and there's breakfast, 12 p.m. and it's lunch, 7 p.m. and it's dinner. I don't care. The more we are um, masters of our own reality and we can choose, then it's easier to play this game. You know, because food is closely related to social behavior. And if you live among uh, people or, in, or you work in a company and everybody go to lunch, then you're also going to lunch probably. You don't have to. But also then you can have a choice. You can say, okay, I want to stay light. I want to be efficient. I want to think clearly. Eat something live. Eat salad. Drink juice. Drink smoothies. If you eat lots of carbohydrates, but carbohydrates are not good for your body, then you will feel super heavy and it will take you two hours to digest that. Or protein or meat products. And obviously, the more refined the product is, less energy you gain. And the body wants more and more. It's almost like an addictive type behavior that happens in the subconscious mind. So food is a huge topic. We can just about food talk about hours and learn for four years. But think about that. In the process of self-mastery, we need to start controlling. What do we eat? How do we eat? How much do we eat? When do we eat? Why do we eat? <laughs> and also in that, bring in the joy. I say, okay, when I eat, I want to enjoy my food. I'm blessing my food. Every food we eat here, every meal, we give blessing. I bring the energy of gratitude to my food before I taste it. And if I taste it and it doesn't taste good, I don't continue. I pass it on to my dogs or to my cats or to the earth. Because I don't want to have this low frequency energy in my body. 
drinking water, super important to hydrate the body because most of the cooked food is dead food, meaning that it brings more acidity into the body than alkaline. So acidity and alkaline are the two uh, levels that create the balance in the digestive uh, system. And we want to bring more alkaline. Alkaline cells are cells that are rich in life force energy. If we talk about chi and life force energy. And dead cells are acidic cells that need more alkaline to bring the balance back. Okay. And the most acidic elements are usually uh, dead uh, meat. So for those who eat meat, you need to think about that. Maybe reducing the quantities. I'm a pure example of breaking the DNA of someone that needs to eat meat based on blood type. So blood type O plus considered must have meat in order to live strong and healthy for long. And I said, really? I want to see. And I slowly, slowly, slowly broke this pattern. And so we can change. We can change the way our body operates. So that's one example. Water is another example. Then in the another phase of self-mastery, we talk about exercise. And that's exactly what we do with our Qigong weekly. And some of you are already doing daily, which is amazing. And you see the benefits and the results. We want to train our body again. Let's say that you, you have the choice to pick up any car you want, any car, from the worst, you know, broken car, that rusty and, and uh, choking every second meter, to the most beautiful, you know, whatever you imagine, Rolls Royce, Porsche, Ferrari, I don't know, like four wheel high, huge truck, which one you will choose? From a place that there's no judgment, Nobody's judging you. Nobody's telling you you should or you should not. It's good. It's not good. It helps not. Each one of us will have a certain different preference, but I am 99% sure that most of us will choose strong, beautiful, fresh, new, long-lasting car in our favorite color. Same we need to look at our body. But we have tendency to forget about the body as long as the body operates. Okay, never mind. Let's walk inside, let's sleep, let's... Uh, forgetting, forgetting to pay attention to signs. And so the more we train the body in a good way and in the exercise aspect, we have four types of exercise. We have external exercises that build our muscles and our strength. We have internal exercises that build the energy of our internal organs, which is the main, the most essential one is Qigong. After that, Tai Chi. After that, Yoga. After that, breathing. Even though we breathe all the time. All the time we breathe, but not always we are conscious to our breath. What do we breathe? What type of air? Polluted air, clean air, dry air, wet air, moist air, air with fungus. And how deep is the breath? How clean or dirty or obstructed our lungs are? And so that's the beautiful thing with internal exercises that it, we are working constantly with communication between movement and breath, movement and breath. So let's do, even if we're sitting now, let's do a little stretching of our arms, like we're taking a breath in from the lungs and stretching the hands out. And stretching our spine and bring the hands up as we breathe in and we push energy down towards the center of the body and we breathe out to the sides one more time breathing in up breathe out to the sides two more times breathing in So there is a practice of Qigong seated. We do it one more time. Breathing in, up. Breathing out, side. A whole set of seated Qigong. We take two exercises of that. 
Another one, we breathe in, bring one hand above and one hand behind the body, so behind my back. And we twist the spine and look back and come back to center, bring the hand symmetrically in front and turn to the other side. One hand go behind the head, behind the back and the other hand above the head, allowing the body to twist. With the next breath in, coming back to center, and turn to the other side, looking backwards, and back to center, turn to the other side, looking backwards, back to center, turn to the other side, looking backwards, back to center, the other side, looking backwards. Back to center, bring the hands down to the side already. Breathing in, kind of closing or, or balancing the energy down. Nice. Feel how that three minutes completely move the energy of our body. Another thing, if you sit like a lotus uh, shape with the legs, uh, with your knees uh, attached, you can hold two knees with the hands. And now we push one side and twist the spine and look back. So the twist goes from the lower spine to the top of the head, looking back, stretching, coming back to center and doing the opposite. Push one hand, twist the spine completely. And back to the center, one more time, to one side. And the other side. Ah, back to center, and I'm shaking a bit. So we are feeling our body. And it's always good to do that, even if you're in the middle of a, a long conversation, conference, you know, you are working hours and hours to complete a project. Um, you watch a movie for three hours, you know, sit in a conversation, you listen to a talk, move your body a little bit, don't be shy. Listen to the body. If we don't listen to our body, our body start to, that's exactly the, exp the example I gave of a tree. The body, when it reach its peak state, which is around 25, 35 years, maybe 40, it starts to go on the, from the top of the hill and starts to go down. You know, in the past, 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 when people were super connected to the earth and to the planet and walked barefoot and ate only fresh stuff, they lived hundreds of years, 300, 400 years. Their body was super fit because they had to, they had to use the body all the time. And then we went like completely from that to a state where people lived only 40 years, 50 years with all the technological revolution, where there was so much pollution and so little food and so much stress and wars that people completely ignored their body. And the amount of stress caused them to shrink faster. <clears throat> I saw, I've been to indigenous tribes and people were, people were like shrank from the age of 40, 50, they started to shrink. And if they reached the age of 80, they walked like so compressed till they could hardly move their body. So we are here to remember to stretch our body and walk proud and, and really give respect to this vehicle that we have and improve it. That's another beautiful thing, you know. But yeah, also with cars, we can improve cars. We can improve the way our body operates and it's it's not related to age when we start limit ourselves when we are old and we are getting old and we feel all these old signs of course the body will follow because who's that our own mind implement those ideas i'm getting old i'm super young i'm getting younger i say when people ask me so how old are you i say i'm not old why you ask how old i am i'm young ask me how young i am and they say, how young? <laughs> and then I have another answer. Yeah, because I feel young. And I wake up in the morning 
checking what's what's going on with my body. I do my stretching and I do my qigong and I do my tai chi based on how I feel. It turns into a lifestyle. So that's the level of exercise. We want to exercise the body and exercise the mind as well. Okay, the mind is like a muscle. The memory is like a muscle. So we need to remember to exercise those as well. And that's another beautiful thing with Tai Chi, for example. It exercises the mind, the memory. And we need to memorize uh, steps. And so we are combining movement, breath, focus, the mind. Very powerful exercise. Also with Qigong. The main two differences between Qigong and Tai Chi, Qigong is the exercise to cultivate our inner energy. Tai Chi is the dance of Tao, is the dance of the flow of Qi along all the meridians in the body, from inside, outside, from outside, inside, along all the channels. So that's the difference. When we practice both, we gain more. We, we gain the, the, the recharging of the batteries of the body, through the kidneys from Qigong, and then we gain the harmonious flow of distributing that charged energy among all the meridians and the internal organs. And that's a beautiful thing. And I would love to, in the future, to open a group for Tai Chi and also have an online Tai Chi course, which is a short eight steps course that you can learn in your spare time. Time is precious. Our life is very, very precious. If you want to live a healthy, beautiful life, self-mastery. Food, exercises, then listening to our body and understanding if we in check, if everything is okay. Everything is okay, we move on. We can improve. We can learn new things. We can become influencers, being an example of a superior being that walk the path of self-mastery. And it starts small. We not wake up one morning and say, yes, I'm a master of my own body. It takes time. But again, time we have. The more we are disciplined to do something and remembering not to be stressed about that. So what does it remind us? To have fun, to be in joy through the journey, with the journey. Being gratitude and appreciation to finish a Qigong class and say, wow, I feel amazing. And then the doubt comes, but what is this, this from, only from Qigong? I didn't do anything. How can it possibly be? I didn't sweat. I didn't. Uh, but all these things are happening. The critical mind and sharp mind see the correlation between what I did and how I feel. Also, magic can be explained in this way. We are operating with magic. In self-mastery, once we understand how to operate this system, which we call body, how the mind operates, how they control and affect each other, we can relax a little bit more. And we can understand also or learn how the universe operates. You know, the mysterious ways of manifestation based on my inner, how the outer works. The cycles of seasons of life and death, of transformation, of change, of events that are happening. And if we are very narrow-minded and, and sitting in our little rabbit hole, then we think that everything is against us and everything happens like, we don't know why, but why it happens to me and not to my friend. But if we understand that the greater, greater flow of things always bring us teachings and challenges, not failures, challenges for us to grow, if we understand that it's a challenge and we find our inner strength that comes also by the effort, our inner strengths come from the effort of building our own chi, our own life force energy, our own vitality. When we have the strength, we see a challenge like a wave. We say, huh, let me ride the wave. I want to feel this challenge and win that challenge. And if I didn't, it's not a failure. It's like, okay, that was my lesson. Maybe this is not for me. I want to climb this crazy mountain because my friend did. I go halfway and I say, oof, this is just too much, you know. If I walk back, ba uh, backwards, some people will say, hey, he failed. But for me, I say, I just understood that it's not for me. I'm not having fun walking this mountain. 
I don't want to climb another 2,000 feet and like have no breath and, and what then? I'll just be above the cloud and see clouds? I don't care. So when we learn to, to eliminate the self-judgment about failure, fear, shame, we start living more at ease and more with joy towards what we do in our choices. And that's self-mastery, for sure. And so then we go into environment, like what's around us? Are we influencing our environment? Yes. How? By just being? Yes, because our being also vibrates energy, positive, negative, or neutral. And that's what influences the environment. Now we can be more activists in our environmental uh, skills and actions, like help cleaning the streets, help cleaning the ocean, help uh, demonstrating towards ecology, ecological lifestyle and the recycling center and so on. But we also can just be in our own little world and do that. And it also infiltrate ripples and influence others because if you really practice what you believe in you change yourself and you change others by being an example to that this is self-mastery it's not i'm not going to master the world i'm going to just master myself and my life and the way i live and how i want to see i want to throw to the big rubbish bin only one bag once a week not one bag once a day full of plastics well so how do i do that i need to change the ways i'm behaving with the world and interacting and consuming and understand that i can recycle my own stuff so many ways to influence the world in a good way in a positive way and again that's what the world needs now that's why we are all in that field of listening to that and people talking about that and that. and there's also the race of let's make millions how you know different ways so we need to see where is our way of doing what we love doing, influencing, being in joy, and, and learning about self-mastery. I'm 100% advocate of self-mastery because this is a way where we create our reality. And my reality is like, I live in paradise. I live in paradise on this earth. It's just amazing, amazing. I wish you all could come here and live with me like that. But if not, I just give you a glimpse and I give you tastes. And from Czech Republic, only this year we had, I had, I don't know how many people came to live with us and feeling how is it to live like that. And then I was invited to present a 15 minute talk in Prague Castle about life in Costa Rica in this paradise which was amazing because it was the efforts, the fruit of my seeds of wanting to influence the world in a better way. And it starts with self-mastery. I didn't know it would reach that stage 20 years ago when I started, but I knew I want to understand myself better and to bring the life to the optimal place I want to feel them and experience them. Because we don't know how many times we will come back to this game. We are playing now. So if you see a promotion called the Spiritual Pirate, it might be me. That's the tiny bit about self-mastery for today. I promised an hour. It's an hour. I love you. Mucho, mucho. Thank you for listening. Uh, we'll do once a month this kind of uh, mastermind talk. And maybe more, I don't know, but that's my intention to have at least once a month activating, inspiring you to find and to refine your ways and to find more ways of self mastery. And for my uh, Qigong uh, group, I will uh, upload a short uh, practice later on of uh, Qigong that I recorded uh, in a beautiful place in North Costa Rica and uh, share it with you so you can enjoy this week uh, class. Ah, thank you so much. I really appreciate listening. If you have any comments, please send me any questions. Please send me any requests to create something or to share more about certain topic. Send me. I'm happy to, to be pushed to share more with the world on different layers, at different levels. 
and yeah, it's part of my mission on this planet at this time. Muchas gracias, Todarba. Thank you so much. Big love.